Hey, Weather Warriors, welcome to this video here. We're talking about the National Weather Service 2019-2020 winter outlook, and I'm going to compare theirs to my winter forecast. There's some big differences. But before we get started, if you like daily forecast breakdowns, extreme weather events, stuff you won't see on TV, we'll get rid of that, go ahead and click the subscribe button. We go much more in detail on this channel and comment below what region of the U.S. you're from so we can make content for your area. So first thing we're going to look at here is the temperature outlook for 2019 and 2020 here. This area in the orange, they are forecasting above average. Now these are probabilities, okay? So it's not 33% above average. It's just like a 33 to 40% greater chance that there's going to be above average temperatures in that area. This area in the darker orange is about 40 to 50%. So a much greater probability as you head towards the southern U.S. and southeastern United States and also the far northeastern United States. Obviously, my forecast is going to differ a bit, but we'll go over that in a second. Now, Hawaii... That's maxed out at about 60 to 80 percent. Kind of can't tell the color there. It's probably about a 60 to 70. And then obviously out there in Alaska, 50 to 60. And then the west half is 50 to 60 and the east half is a little less than that. So they're thinking uh, that's going to be pretty warm. And then equal chances up here in the northern U.S., which means it could go either way. How about their uh, precipitation? Well, the precipitation outlook is generally above average for much of the northern U.S. all the way out to about the east coast. Now it's about to Montana and even greater chance out here as you head towards the northern plains into the Midwest. And then below average out here in Canada or, uh, uh, excuse me, California and then southern parts near the Gulf, uh, probably Texas and Louisiana, eastern Texas. So below average down there. Now, how does that differ to my forecast? Well, let's look at my forecast this is going to change, by the way. I got a new winter outlook coming out Saturday, which is like a day from now. But if you haven't, I mean, it might be out already if you're seeing this video. So either way, there's going to be some changes here. But, you know, overall, this looks good for this video. There's definitely going to be some changes. But look at this area. This is what I have for temperatures. Now, my, my map's a little bit different. It's going to go by averages of degrees above or below so this area in blue is going to average out two degrees below average and then up here it's going to be about two to four maybe maybe a little bit more six degrees below average up here so it's a little bit different with mine i'm thinking cooler than average temperatures for the northeastern half of the united states and then above average here one to three degrees in the southwestern united states there's going to be some factors that i think is going to be a little bit cooler here this is going to change a little bit. I might actually be moving this a little bit farther northwest, but there are some factors that I believe are going to contribute to a cooler winter for much of the northern U.S. How about the precipitation? This is going to change as well, but you know, this forecast I had above average precipitation for the east part of the United States and then a below average for the southwestern United States. I think this area is still going to be uh, pretty similar for the new outlook. But the new outlook, I, I'm going to put some above average precipitation for parts of the northern United States here and include them as well. Based off this October pattern, some of the sea surface changes and uh, stuff like that. And then snowfall amounts, this is what I'm guessing. These are in percentages above or below. So 33% above average out here in the east, northeast half of the United States. And then the far northeastern United States here, 66% above average. This is going to change as well. Probably going to be moving this a little bit farther to the northwest and include a lot of the northern plains. And then about the southwest quadrant of the United States, I'm, I'm guessing about 33 to 66% below average snowfall. Now, if you look at the Enzo here, it was going to be a La Nina or El Nino, uh, you know, and I've been... When I made this last winter forecast, it was down the, the uh, it looked like it was going towards a La Nina, but I said it would come back up, and it's doing that. And I think, you know, it's going towards an El Nino. Not sure why that happened, but it's going towards an El Nino, but I think it's going to stay kind of in between uh, two degrees above and below average. So it's going to be a neutral winter, is what I'm forecasting. And if you look at the waters here, they're a little bit warmer than they were a month ago. I don't think that's going to translate to an El Nino. If it did, it'd be a very, very weak one. But like I said, I, I'm, I'm forecasting neutral. Now, the other area you're going to want to watch is this area out in the Gulf of Alaska. Very warm out there. Could contribute to some ridging, but it is cooling along the coast. So 
yeah, it might be a little bit cooler farther west. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. And again, new winter forecast will uh, look at these changes. And you can see this, this PDO, this area near the Gulf of Alaska, is cooling quite a bit. And that could contribute to maybe a little bit cooler farther west. We'll have to watch that. This is a positive or a, a, a warm phase PDO. And this was what it would look like about a month ago, but it is starting to change a bit. So stay tuned for my winter forecast for that. Now, a positive PDO, this typically indicates a, a cooler east and a warmer uh, northwestern United States. And then a negative, which is kind of trending towards, still not quite a true negative, but kind of trending towards that. You get a warmer southeast and, and a cooler northwest. These things are always, there's a lot of factors involved here, but... Now, the National Weather Service, what are they factoring into their precipitation and outlooks and stuff like that? Well, they're factoring the MJO, and they're factoring in the Arctic Oscillation, which is the circulation up near the poles. And because it's a neutral winter, all of these other things that I'm talking about, the PDO, the MJO, you know, the, what else, the AO, the NAO, all these other teleconnections might have a bigger impact. And also what I think is going to happen, and those change quite a bit from day to day, week to week, that's going to cause a lot of temperature swings across the United States. So even though it says below, in my forecast, a below average, you're going to get warm ups and you're going to get cool downs, both coasts in the United States, but it's just going to average out that way through the three months. And that's going to be for December through February. National Weather Service does say that too. But like I said, they're just a little bit warmer, especially for the east part of the United States. I think it's going to be a little bit cooler out here and uh you know we have some other factors that would indicate that as well so that is generally the differences between me and noah again i'm gonna have a winter forecast out here in a day or two if it isn't already out now i think one other thing we forgot is the neutral pattern so what does a neutral pattern look like well your polar jet stream here off to the north the subtropical jet not as strong so you're not going to get quite as wet conditions as you would as a El Nino out in the southern and southeastern United States, but still kind of wet. Generally warm in the southern half of the United States and then the northern part of the United States, it does uh, trend a little bit cooler. But again, neutrals are kind of finicky and all of these other factors like the waters out near Alaska, the NAO out here near Greenland, and, and many other factors like the Arctic Oscillation, those are going to play bigger roles and it's going to cause a lot of temperature swings. The snowpack is something else we're going to watch. And uh, the QBO and the stratospheric warming could release some polar vortexes into the U.S. this winter. Because it looks like it is starting to weaken. We'll have that on the winter forecast. That'll be a big update. So with all that said, that's going to wrap up this video. Just wanted to show you the differences between my forecast and NOAA's. Hit that subscribe button because we're going to be releasing these more frequently because the weather's always changing. If I see a red flashing light, I will uh, let you know about it. So subscribe, hit those bell notifications, smash that thumbs up button, and check out my original winter forecast up here. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you soon.